Hi, my name is Inna Servan, and I'm going to show you how I have my server set up as a domain controller on my network. Uh, the program, I'm, the operating system I'm using on my controller is called SME Server, and right now I'm just logging into the uh, web control uh, interface. Uh, this allows me to act, control the settings on my server without actually being at the machine itself. I can do it remotely from my personal machine. Uh, right now I'll show you, this is the domain, internet.local. Uh, that's the domain that I have running from the machine. I, you can, uh, you would usually have, you know, your dot com, but because this is only uh, a local network, I chose the name internet.local, uh, and it's the primary domain. It's the only one I have currently working from the server. And you can see it's set to uh, resolve uh, DNS locally. So it is the domain name server. So any computer on the network, when it looks for a domain name, when you look up a website, for example, it will look to the server uh, before it looks anywhere else for that domain name. Uh, right here you can see uh, all the different user accounts I have set up on this server uh, as well. Right, And right here, this is the actual uh, domain portion uh, that shows the Windows workgroup name as well as the server name. Uh, this I can also. This is also where I have selected uh, to use the server as a domain controller. Uh, by having a Windows workgroup, this allows me to uh, log into a domain account on a Windows computer. Uh, and so that's the basic setup for uh, this uh, on the server end. Uh, it's this uh, particular operating system is great in the fact that it is able to you're able to use it pretty much as soon as you install the operating system on the machine. Uh, you just have to put put in a couple of settings and you're good to go with the email server uh, files sharing uh, and e email. Uh, user accounts and that sort of thing it's it's all set up for you uh, which is great um, okay now I'm going to show you how I set up my uh, Windows computer on the network uh, so this is a I signing in as the administrator on the on the computer itself this happens to be the server I have uh, it's current it's running uh, Windows 2000 server edition uh, so you notice there I did lo sign in locally on the machine itself uh, and not onto a domain because I'm going to be setting that up uh, well at least showing you how to set that up here uh, shortly and because this is an older computer it does uh, take a while to load up uh, as you can see, I do have some antivirus on there. Uh, but what I'll show you uh, right now is uh, the network settings. Uh, first thing you want to do when you set up a machine, uh, for, for most uh, like workstations on a network, you want them to have uh, you want them to look. Uh, for the, to the network to be assigned an IP address so I have it set to obtain an IP address automatically and to uh, obtain DNS addresses automatically so it's going to look to the server uh, for that information which is key to avoiding any mix-ups uh, this, this way it allows the domain controller to do that automatically for me Okay, so th we know those settings are set. So right now it's set to automatically receive an IP address from the network. Uh, and it also looks to the network for uh, domain names when it, when you, like when you enter an email, uh, a web page address in your, in the web browser. 
Okay, so now that we've done that, uh, we're going to set up the computer so that it will, so that you can access uh, network accounts on the computer. So the main thing is I have, you can see I have the domain selected uh, here and I've used the uh, the Windows workgroup name that I set up in the SME, ser uh, SME server manager. Uh, so that's the workgroup name. This allows me to you access my user account on the domain. So I'm just going to log out of the administrator account, the local administrator account on this computer, which, because this is an older machine, will take a few minutes. Uh, it's very important to make sure uh, that you do have the correct workgroup name. Uh, I did when I first set it up. I put in the actual domain name, internet.local, instead of the Windows workgroup name of internet, and it wouldn't work for me, and it took some reading in the manual to figure out what I had done wrong. Okay, so now I'm going to log in with my username uh, for my account on the on the domain and you see I'll select the internet domain instead of the local computer okay so now I'm signing in here yeah, this take a little time and as you see it Logs back, logs me in, uh, and I've now logged in with my account from the domain controller. So this means any any computer uh, attached to the network, I can sign in as long as it's set up to work with the domain. I can sign in with my account, and I'll also show you the webmail uh, feature. So this is the actual home page. If you go to, if you open up the web browser on this network and go to internet.local, it'll bring up this web page uh, that, that I created. Um, and because I don't have an actual domain, uh, registered domain name, uh, I will need to uh, make a, an exception, a uh, for the certificate because the certificate comes from the domain controller itself so it's not trusted by my web browser. So I'm just going to confirm my security exception because I know I'm not going to get anything bad from it, it's my own server. And so now I can log in with my username and password into the webmail and In just a minute, it'll bring up my my mailbox. And if I did have this uh, server set up as a web server available on to uh, exter externally uh, on the internet, then I would be able to uh, log into my webmail anywhere that has an internet connection, as long as my server was turned on and connected to the internet as well. Uh, however, I don't currently have that set up, uh, mostly because I my internet connection doesn't. I, I'm behind a couple of firewalls, so I can't set it up as uh, a true web server. Uh, but right now, I'll also show you uh, my documents. Uh, so this is the documents folder that's been created since I logged into this computer uh, with my domain account it automatically created in my documents folder and you'll also see here uh, this account has a partition uh, on the hard drive of the domain controller so this is uh, basically storage space that's not on this machine but on a different on 
the domain controller which is another machine on this network okay so that's that's pretty much that uh, so right now I'm just going to open up the command prompt uh, and I'm just going to first thing I'm going to do is check the IP address uh, if you remember before I I set it to automatically uh, look for an IP address from the network because the network assigns an IP address and so you can actually see here the IP address it's been assigned this computer has been assigned is 10.0.0.84 and you can also see the DHCP server, that's the server, that's the domain controller, uh, the 10.0.0.254. DHCP means that it assigns IP addresses, and it's also the default gateway, which means uh, it, this computer will look to the domain controller for its internet connection. Right now I'm just pinging uh, different machines on the network. Uh, so I just... Uh, last machine I pinged there, the 10.0.0.54 is actually my personal uh, laptop. Uh, the 10.0.0.1 uh, I just tried to ping is uh, my uh, router, which is my internet, which is my gateway to the internet, and also my firewall. Now, if I wanted to, I could set, uh, if, if I had another network connection on my domain controller server, I could also have it set up as a gateway and a firewall, uh, so that any internet traffic on the network would have to go through the domain controller itself and as you can see I just closed the connection uh, I was I was actually accessing that computer remotely from my personal computer uh, my laptop so uh, and you'll that's very common uh, with large networks where it's not uh, the computers that you're working with aren't always easily accessible uh, it's very common to use remote login software so that you can access these things uh, remotely from your own machine. Okay, so right now I'm going to show you how I set up my router uh, to work with the, uh, the domain controller uh, on, on the network because uh, the main thing that we're looking for here is where you can see I have enable uh, the DNS relay checkmark. That means that the the router will tell will send DNS information to the domain controller, uh, where the domain controller isn't connected directly to the internet. You will also see I have I don't have DHCP server enabled on the router uh, because that. I have that enabled on the domain controller, so I don't want the router trying to assign IP addresses when my domain controller is trying to assign IP addresses as well. And I can uh, on the router here. I can also uh, allow port forwarding uh, and that sort of thing for different programs I have that access the internet. And yeah, these are just other advanced settings on the router as well. And that's it. That's how we set up the uh, network for use with the domain controller and how we have the domain controller set up and how to set up a machine to work with the domain. I hope you found this uh interesting, if not uh, useful and educational, uh, and uh, yeah, that, that's it.